Today we're going to show you how Hamel can simplify your markup and speed up front-end development. Hamel is the brainchild of Hampton Catlin and stands for HTML Abstraction Markup Language. As developers, we naturally gravitate towards products or languages that help us keep our work clean and organized. Most of us prefer WebKit-based browsers that render things properly and can even let you get away with a couple of mistakes here and there, but sometimes we still have to hack code for hours just to get a site to render correctly in IE6. When given the choice, we try to use one of the increasing number of RESTful JSON services for data, but sometimes we still have to deal with XML and crazy SOAP services. We all prefer the jobs where we get to create a fresh site with clean markup, but sometimes we still have to maintain a site written in an obtrusive version of Dreamweaver. So being a developer today means tolerating the ugly code when we have to, but we should always be proactively searching for new ways to write beautiful, simple code. So why Hamel? Let's start by looking at a piece of HTML. HTML is XML's ugly cousin. Like XML, HTML is a nested data structure. If we write our HTML in an indented style like this, the closing tags aren't really needed because the new lines and indentations can also help us understand where each element is nested in the DOM. Let's tuck that right column up to the left column, just for niceness. Okay, now let's make it a little more beautiful. Let's remove the less than and greater thans. Okay, now let's remove the ID equals and the class equals. Basically, we're getting rid of all the things that are repeated. So now it's starting to look simple and more like CSS. But as you can see, we're still repeating percent %div. Let's assume that if an element isn't specified, it's just a div. So this is what we're left with, Hamel. When using Hamel as a templating language, it looks like this. To render a Ruby expression, all you have to do is put the equal sign after the selector. As you can see from this, it's a lot like CSS, so Hamel makes the syntax for writing your markup more in line with what you're familiar with from CSS. You don't have to remember to remove the pound symbol from IDs or the period before classes. If you're already speaking in CSS selectors with CSS and jQuery, you're already talking in Hamel. So, Hamel has meaning. Your markup is semantic. It's dry. You're not repeating yourself. It's concise and to the point. You can focus on what matters. There's very little switching between context and writing your markup for content and style. You're not worrying about closing tags or the mechanics of HTML. You can write your markup much quicker, and it's beautiful. Look. As you can see, Hamel is easier to read. This is especially true when it comes to ERB. It's a lot easier to see where the user's address is in the Hamel compared to the ERB. Hamel is currently implemented in a number of languages. Ruby, JavaScript, Python, Lua, .NET, Scala, PHP, and even Java. Most of us haven't memorized the XHTML transitional or strict doctype declarations. Thankfully, Hamel does all of the proper conversion for you, so you only need to remember the Hamel 3 exclamation mark declaration. The percent sign before a line indicates an element. Percent HTML means the HTML tag, percent head for the head tag, and so forth. If you want to add attributes to an HTML tag, you include a structure like this. It's very similar to HTML. Elements that don't have the element specified are assumed to be divs. Hamel relies on indenting for formatting, and you indent with two spaces. Add an additional two for every nested level of tags. We have to do this because HTML is a nested data structure, like XML. The indentation of the document is translated into HTML's opening and closing tags. This is necessary for the page's construction, and also for search engine spiders to interpret meaning. To get started with Hamel, you simply need to install it by running gem install Hamel. You can use Hamel as a command line tool to output HTML. In its command line form, 
HAML outputs as XHTML transitional by default. So when we type in HAML space index.haml, which is our input, space index.html, which is our desired output file, we see this file generated. However, you can pass in an argument using dash f with the format you'd like to use for output. As you can see, an HTML5 document has been generated. You can also give Haml a try online without installing it by visiting haml-lang.com slash try.html. We hope you've enjoyed having a taste of what Haml has to offer, and hopefully it will be another tool in your arsenal that can be used in your upcoming web development projects. We'll be covering Haml usage in upcoming screencasts using Sinatra and Rails 3, so we hope to see you then. Thanks for watching! Subscribe to our RSS feed, follow us on Twitter, and please leave any comments, questions, or suggestions for new screencasts in the comments below. If you like our videos, please like us on Facebook, and feel free to join the conversation there. See you next time!